Hello, Gorangies are on view, this time for our sale on the 15th of April. Good grief, the year's flying by. And as ever, a mixture to show you. I'm going to pick out a few highlights as we wander around the sale room. So starting with this, fancy having someone around to dinner. How about lot 536? An extraordinarily extensive dinner, tea and coffee service. Uh, it's Wedgwood, it's gold Florentine pattern. This will have been extremely expensive when it was new. Um, and uh, as you can see, you've got a wide array of accessories. Looks like there's, we've got a list here of how many there are. This looks like there's a dozen or more. Uh, it, can, it can sit down and, and uh, service. A few little breakages here and there, but in the main condition looks very good. So marvellous dinner service there, won't be expensive. Carrying on round, this might catch your eye. If you've been watching television of late, watching The Gentleman, the Guy Ritchie series on um, Netflix, I believe, in one of the episodes, you'll have seen that um, drug smugglers decide that the best way to smuggle marijuana is to pack it into statues of the Virgin Mary, looking suspiciously similar to this one. <laughs> um, I imagine the staff have looked inside, but it's like 159 if you want something that looks like a prop. Didn't come from anything to do with the uh, series, just, just coincidence. So often the way. Barometers. Here's, here's an interesting lot. Look at this. We've got look, one sort of 189 to 191. And it's kind of a, 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 a modest lesson in barometers. Barometers are really tough to sell at the moment. It's a bit like long case clocks, they're out of fashion. And I guess people are scared about mercury and moving it around is a problem. Shipping it's a problem. So they've gone down. Now, wheel barometers were always the lesser variety. And then stick barometers, as showing here in the form of a stick, were more desirable and scarcer and generally more valuable. This one by Amadeo of uh, the city, and that would be the city of London. Looks to date to me to around about 1840 or so. Very nice condition, looks to be all working, mahogany. Uh, surprising number of the makers are um, Italian or Neapolitan, I believe, um, and came over to uh, England and, and set up as barometer makers. So sitting next to it is, is more of a ship's or potentially scientific barometer. And the reason we know this is partly because it's in the round, it's not necessarily made flat to go against the wall. And then it has this hanging loop up the top, a crowned G for, um, it's not the monarch, but it will be a gentleman of note, a nobleman. And this was the sort of barometer you might use um, on a ship so that it wobbles around, um, but usually they're in brass and they have more of a gimbal set up. You could possibly have it go up in a hot air balloon. <laughs> really? um, uh, yes. Or have it just for scientific purposes. But either way, it's an interesting model. Um, and I think we've got a maker's name, uh, Worthington of um, Worthington and Allen of London on that one with an ivory scale. So I need the site is for all. I think it's ivory, not bone. And then again, next to it, yet another one here. Uh, lot 191. And again, signed up at the top uh, with just the scale here. Um, and again, very much this um, scientific or ships or travelling form. So some unusual, two unusual barometers there. A uh, little barometer lesson, maybe get you interested, start a barometer collection. Now is definitely a good time to buy. Otherwise, we've got a nice bureau over there. We've got long case blocks, of course. We've got Anglo-Chinese cabinets. We've even got a run over tiger. Lot 168. I know it looks a bit shabby, but people are still buying these, still like that sort of shabby chic look, I suppose, and taxidermy remains strong. Uh, and then cast your eyes down, number of carpets in the sale, always worthwhile having a look, uh, all shapes and sizes and colours, so well worthy of consideration. We'll go and have a look round the back. So here we are, out in the smalls. It's a, an arms, weapons and medals sale, the speciality this time, and we we're, we're see if we can chivvy James out to talk to you about some of the highlights. Meanwhile, looking at the smalls in general, trying not to do the same things as ever, ignoring the Lalique and the bronzes and things, but how about these? decanters pretty well everybody well every house clearance has a decanter or or a dozen decanters and most of the time we say look I'm really sorry we just can't sell them they need to be part of a suite of Waterford or something really super quality um, otherwise you need something exceptional what can be exceptional colored antique colored glass with the titles on them um, Waterford glass company underneath something like that or they could be whoppers like these Huge, and they? these are huge. They're, they're, they look like to me like they take a magnum. 
uh, lot three, three, five, pair of them. Um, definitely old, probably I would say early Victorian. Um, but good lookers and a good size and them. fill those with scotch and they look pretty impressive. Um, not sure what would be more expensive, probably the scotch to fill it rather than the canters themselves. Anyway, drifting backwards, uh, again, looking for sort of unusual things to show you rather than the norm. And there's all sorts of nice things there, but I'm going to go around the corner here. Um, and uh, this brings me round to, what I have in mind for you? Oh, here we are, here's something a bit different. 373, you often see a single bust of a person, but here's a bust of a snogging couple. There we go. So <laughs> I think we've got Romeo and Juliet, lot 373. Oh. This... Sienna type marble base, often indicative of sort of grand tour souvenir or thereabouts. Um, it's got an Udon signature on the back, which is very much sort of homage to Udon. Um, but lots of 373, quite a sweet little bronze. Sitting next to them, um, sets, apparently books, but they're not. They're faux bindings. Switzerland through the stereoscope. There's a clue. Yosemite Valley through the stereoscope. So we open them up and lo and behold, we've got sets of stereoscopic photographs gosh you slide that into the stereoscope and you look through and the two lenses and the two images give it a 3d effect um, and what's nice about these is they're in their original bound volumes and they even have a um a guidebook with them relatively late in date i would say as far as um stereoscopic material goes, but still nice condition and a, a good little group there. So again, something a bit different. What else is different? How about Roland Batchelor? Um, fairly prolific illustrator and painter, um, mostly in watercolour and ink. I'm sure he did lots of illustrations for books and possibly magazines and journals and the like. Um, this is uh, Amsterdam, as we can see. And he's titled it the, the Herring Swallowers, an old Dutch custom. That's fun. There we go. It? They are swallowing herring. Um, and there's the label on the back Roland Bachelor, the Herring Swallowers, um, which is rather nice. Mm. It's in good, clean condition, lot 752. Alongside it, another Roland Bachelor. The lady depicted is Lillian Bayliss, who uh, was a significant, I forget which one, I think she started an opera company or something along those lines. We have put the details online. Uh, hope if you probably if you know you know uh, lot 751 it's a nice little detailed thing and then again pictures this catches my eye 753 look at that um, clearly Japanese interior um, has some age I'd say it's as old as the frame so it's about 1900 1910 and quite nicely painted can't see a signature though it's very dark but very sort of atmospheric isn't it that moon is positively glowing as is the lantern um, but rather fun. Nice, nice thing. 753. Other pictures are available and I'll pick them out. But first of all, I'm going to show you that. Wow, look at that. That is 393. This African beadwork head. Really sculptural. Great fun. Not many other people have got one. It's over a terracotta base, as you can see. Um, they did this beadwork over things like terracotta. At uh, home somewhere, I think I've got a beer bottle that's completely bearded, all uh, beaded, not bearded, beaded all over and decorated again with masks. Mm. So a fun thing. Um, let's have a look at cat. Lot people like cats. I'm told lot three ninety one. It's got the cross swords of Mycen. Is it Mycen though? Hmm. I suspect not. I don't know that the finish, the quality is quite good enough. Look, sort of firing cracks down here. I mean, it is a particularly big piece. <laughs> so quality tends to drift a little as things get larger. We've got an ear chip as well. Um, Dan will have had a look. So it'll be interesting to see what he's got to say. But it very much looks like the Marcolini Mark. Lot 391 um, for cat fans. Then running round, coming round the other side. And again, drifting backwards, these are unusual. Lot 467. Look at that interesting combination. We've got crystal, or cut glass essentially, and then this Champleve decorated work and an ormolu foot. Um, the loose, there are a couple of loose um, Champleve bands to them, but they're still there. And from memory, this is signed by Barbedien, the um, French founder. Um, so they're lot 467 uh, and of some interest. And I think from the same house came 466. And this lady almost certainly 
was part of a clock or something along those lines. I mean, she it looks like she once had a glass dome sitting on top of her, mm. but, and perhaps a lyre or something in her hand. Anyway, there we go. Ormolu ladies. Um, otherwise, coming backwards down, those catch my eye, the lusters with the greyhounds, a bit sort of old school. Almost arts and crafts, lot 476. You get this pair of chamber sticks with insects cast into them and that sort of japonaisery influence and some other bits and pieces with it. Lots of modern Lalique scattered through the sale. Um, and how about a Bouvard? There we go, look at this. This is um, uh, lot 774. Um, and somebody's written on the back, it's a Noel Bouvard, and then they've crossed Noel out and written Antoine. <laughs> Uh, valued by Bellman's in 2017 at 600 pounds. Um, it says here on the back, it's got a Christie's number on the back, it's got a Harris stamp on the back, so it's all happening on the back. And the thing about the Bouvard family is there are quite a few of them, and these days it gets somewhat confusing as to which one uh, it was, and perhaps that was their intention. Antoine was the sort of senior, um, but there were others, so uh, there we go, a Bouvard for you. So interesting mixture, quick look at the silver and jewellery, I'm sure is due. So here we are in the strong room. Silver, there's a mixture of silver. I did a lot of silver last week, so I'm just gonna show you one item, 853. Here's an 18th century, I would say, probably continental silver snuff box, inset with a bit of agate, quite fun. The dog, the hound, and the fox, I guess. Um, further agate to the underside, uh, probably unmarked, I suspect. Um, but there we go, 8.53. Nice little snuff box for you to look at. In the jewellery, there's a good lot of jewellery here. I'm seeing it starts at 900 and I've got 994 here. So by my rough calculation, there are nearly 100 lots of jewellery in this cell, which is rather fab. Very nice. So I'm going to play what's in the box um, here, because we always like a box, don't we? The we mystery do. of the box. Lot 9.30, we open that one up. An old Newman Jewellers, what's going on in there? Mm. And these are fun. Look at this. There we go, look. Oh, there. Great Birdies. Fun. So, um, lovely. These look to me to be Edwardian or thereabouts. Uh, could be a bit later, I suppose, but really great fun, aren't they? And bright oh, enamel, yeah. uh, perched parrots or whatever they are. Lot 930 in gold. So, there's 930. That was fun. 953, a more modern blue box. Doesn't look quite as promising, but it's Jensen. Hooray, look. And there we go. A pair of very typically stylish for Jensen. Um, all marked up. Yep. Bit of oxidisation, might like a polish, but 953, very stylish pair of ear clips. Think how stylish they'd look when worn. Mm. 940, blue, average box. Wow, look at that though, awesome. look at that. Trevor Towner box and a heck of a, a flower ring nice. with, I guess, sapphires and a pearl. Roger will have done all his assessment on it, set in gold. Quite a punchy, sort of powerful thing. Look, it's big. It is, yeah, it? so there we go. 993, getting near the end of the sale. Nice leather box, promising. What have we got in there? A pair of Victorian earrings. There they are. Oh, they're pretty. Gold enamel, diamond and pearl, mm. little drop earrings. Uh, looks like one's come slightly loose. And 994, last but not least, what do we get? Oh, we get a ruby and diamond ring with, with interestingly sort of shaped baguette set shoulders and a bright red stone. Such a pretty color. So, an array of jewellery for you, all sorts of other goodies in there. Of course, all the way through the sale, all sorts of other goodies. So do come along with you if you can. Otherwise, have a good browse online. And you're going to pass over to James. And I'm going to pass over to James, who's going to show you the highlights of the military sale. Thank you. In the military and tribal section of the auction on the 15th, we have got a reasonable selection of uh, various long arms, and a few uh, uh, guns and boxes of militaria, including a couple of box lock, flint lock pistols and a pepper box pistol, which is always a favorite with collectors. Um, with the medals, the highlight is the military cross, uh, which is the First World War military cross, with the miniatures, which is always a nice touch, but without the rest of the medals. There are a good selection of other medals as well, included in the sale. Um, three South Africa medals and, um, and various other First and Second World War medals um, alongside that. Fantastic. Thank you, James.